Geometry Basics. This video is going to go through some of the basic vocabulary that we need in order to further our study of geometry. So we'll begin with the most simple one, which is a point. A point is just a location in space. It has no length, no width, and no height. It's just simply a point. And it's usually named with a capital letter. So we can say, see this point here, we would just call it point A. Next, a line is a collection of points going on forever in both directions. It's very important that you know that it's forever going on in both directions, or we could say it's infinitely going on for on both directions. There is no, there are no endpoints to this line, it, um, and the, the way that we show that it's going on forever or infinitely is put by putting arrows on both sides, showing that it's going on both ways. So if we see this line, we can name it by putting two points on the line, marking two points on the line. We would write it like this with capital letters and show arrows on both sides to um, represent that it's going infinitely forever. And then we would read this line AB. So we would say line AB. Next is a line segment. A line segment is just part of a line. It has two endpoints and includes all of the points between those two endpoints. So we see the endpoints here, C and D. The line segment is um, includes those endpoints and all of the points in between, even the points in there that aren't named. The shortest distance between two points on a flat surface is a line segment. Sometimes you'll see a question that says, what's the shortest distance between these two points? Well, it's just one straight line in between them or a line segment between those two endpoints. So again, to name this line segment that we see here, we would write a line and CD. And notice that it's different from the line because it does not have arrows on either side. To show, so this represents the line segment, and we would read this line segment CD. Next, array is also part of a line, just like a line segment, but it's different because it has one endpoint and then continues forever or infinitely in one direction. So we can see here that ray EF has an endpoint and then continues, and we know it continues because it has the arrow pointing in this direction. So we see this and we would um, name it by writing EF and the ray sign, which is a, um, well, it sort of looks like a line segment with an arrow on one side. And then we would read it ray EF. It's very important that whenever you name or write a, um, a ray, that you say the endpoint first. Notice here I have E first because it's the endpoint. And I would read it EF with the endpoint first. An angle is a figure formed by two rays that have the same endpoint. Um, so here's an example of that. This is a ray and another ray, and when they meet at this endpoint, it forms an angle, this opening there. An angle can also be found whenever lines or line segments intersect. So here are two intersecting line segments, and this actually forms four angles. There's one, two, three, and four angles. And here we can see two lines intersecting that also forms four angles. One, two, three, four angles are formed when those lines intersect. Well, we have a special name for one point on this angle, which is the point where two or more rays meet. So this right here would be the vertex of this angle because the two rays are meeting at this point. When we name an angle, it's important that you, um, so here's an example of an angle. It's important that you always put the vertex in the middle. So you can re name this angle here, angle A, B, C, and writing the B or the vertex in the middle of our three letters. Or we could just name this angle simply by the vertex. We could name it angle B. You have to know um, that all lines are either intersecting or they are parallel. They, um, they can't be both. So every um, intersecting lines, they always have one point in common. 
So here are two intersecting line segments, and you can see this one point here where they are intersecting. Here are two intersecting lines, and they are intersecting right at that one point. These two lines are a special kind of intersecting lines. They are perpendicular lines. So perpendicular lines are special intersecting lines that form right angles, or 90 degree angles. And you can see here that this is forming a 90 degree angle because that small square has been drawn to represent it. So in this cube, there are perpendicular lines here, this line, this edge is perpendicular to this edge. It forms a right angle right on the front. There's lots of perpendicular lines, but that's an example of a pair of perpendicular lines in this cube. Also, um, inside a house where the or school or room or anything, where the wall meets so the wall meets the floor, um, that forms a they are perpendicular to each other because it forms a 90 degree angle where the wall hits the floor or even where the ceiling hits the wall. So there are perpendicular lines all around us. In this picture, this would be forming the um, right angle right here. Parallel lines are opposite of intersecting lines. They are lines that lie in the same plane and do not intersect. Parallel lines are always the same distance apart from each other, and they don't share any points. So here's a good example of parallel lines. I always think about a road being, the two sides of a road being parallel to each other. In this cube, you can also find parallel lines because this line on the opposite sides of the square face are parallel to each other. They will never intersect. Be really careful that you don't get um, tricked on finding parallel lines. These lines are drawn so that they don't intersect, but they don't meet this criteria. They are not always the same distance apart. Notice how they are wide um, here and getting closer to each other here. That means that they're not parallel lines because if you extend them, eventually these two lines are going to intersect. So we cannot call these parallel lines. So let's put together all of those definitions and vocabulary words that we have um, named and find them in this drawing. Um, there are lots of points, but we see one here that's not part of any line. We'll name that one. The doorknob is um, a point, and we can call it point A. Um, I see a line here, and I know that it's a line and not just a line segment because it has arrows on either side saying that it goes on forever infinitely. So we will call this line, and show it with arrows on either side, line KL by naming two points on the line. We can find a line segment here going from point F to point G. So you name a line segment by showing a line and then two points on it, F, G. Um, next, we're looking for a ray, and I see a ray here starting at J and going through G, and I see that it's continuing because of the arrow. So we're going to name this ray by starting at its endpoint, J going through G, and we're going to show that it's a ray by drawing a, um, a line that has an arrow on one side. Next, we can look for an angle, and I see a good angle here, G, J, H. Remember, you always want to put the vertex in the middle. So we're going to say this is angle G, J, H, making sure that the vertex, again, is in the middle. Um, we can say that J, again, is a vertex. So point J is a vertex of this angle. Um, intersecting lines. There are lots of intersecting lines, but here is a pair, FB, line segment FB intersects with line segment BC. So line segment FB intersects with line segment BC. If we're looking for perpendicular lines, actually those two we just picked are perpendicular because they here form a right angle. So those would also meet this um, criteria of being perpendicular lines. And finally, parallel lines. 
we can say that the sidewalk here um, is parallel because they would, they're parallel because they would never meet. They're always the same distance apart. So line KL is parallel to line M 